So hello and welcome back to Do My D. My name is Glenn and today we're looking at the fourth series of Banknotes of China. So this is the fourth series. Uh, the first series was an inflation series and they issued it over a few years but the design was pretty much the same. The second series was the first reform coin and banknotes and they were not as common as what they once were uh, and they're also a bit expensive. The second series is a bit more expensive except for the higher denominations and before that they never issued a 50 and 100 yuan. Well, this series they did issue those denominations. Uh, the first ones issued were the 51 and the 55 jiao. In 1987, so this is when the economic reforms really bear fruit on the Chinese economy. Then in 1988, they issued the 100, the 1 and 2 jiao, and the uh, 1 and 2 yuan, should I say, and the 2 jiao. Then later on in 1988, they issued the 5 and 10 yuan, as well as the 1 jiao. So, be between 87 and 88, they issued most of the banknotes. And the coins of the series were issued in 1992. Uh, and basically, that was all the banknotes issued at the time. So there is no 20 yuan, as they do use now. Um, but they did issue a 2 yuan, which they don't currently uh, issue for circulation. But they do still use these 1, 2, and 5 jiao banknotes. Uh, and they also use coins of 1 and 5 jiao um, and 1 yuan. But it depends where you go to China. So there's lots of people in Australia and they can give you some information. Some places they just use the banknotes. Some places they use the banknotes and the coins. Some places they just use the coins. But an interesting thing about this series is that they have different ethnic groups on China. So here we have a Manchu and a Miao man. So Manchus, uh, uh, they originated in you know, Manchuria, that's north of Korea. But the Qin Dynasty was made up of that ethnic group and they become pretty much synthesized, which means they adopted Chinese culture. And on the back, we have languages. So we have mainly in Pinyin, so Mandarin, and with Latin transliteration. Transliteration means you just translate the sound into a different script. Then we have Mongolian script, which is written from top to bottom. We have Tibetan, which is written from left to right. Or is it right to left? Mm, yeah, I think left to right. Then we have Uyghur, which is definitely written from uh, right to left. So you write it that way. Then we have Zhuang, which is related to uh, Thai and Lao. So Thai is a major language in that language family. Uh, Uyghur is related to Turkish and Uzbekistan as Azerbaijani. Uh, Tibetan is related to Mandarin and Cantonese in the Sino-Tibetan language family. And Mongolian is its own family. So four different language families. Then we have the coat of arms. Yeah, just a style pattern which is the old way of try and discourage counterfeiting and the denomination and there's those two ethnic groups which are same and then we have a people's republic of china in chinese so Zhongguo. and on the two jail we have two women a boy and a korean so the korean woman is in the background you can tell by her clothing and these will be what we call 
cultural outfits so they don't really wear them but at a certain time period they would have been quite common and i like the patterns in the background they're actually quite nice so these banknotes you can probably get for like one or two dollars if you go to china you can probably get them uh from the bank then we have the five jail so this one has a Miao and Zhuang woman. So I'm not too sure which one is which. But, you know, if you type in Wikipedia, or even if you just type in Google, and their, their ethnic costumes, ethnic clothing, because sometimes they do still wear them, uh, it could show you. Then we have the one you one, and as you can see, they are facing a different way. And this is a Dong and Yao women. So, but this series, you also have a more elaborate pattern. So we have a, looks like a mixture of Persian and Chinese style uh, flowers with birds flying around. It's quite nice. You also have a security feature to help those that are visually impaired you also got watermarks on these ones and on the back we have the Great Wall of China and uh, the language is there again and we also have these seals here so these are pretty much older seals that they're using Imperial China you can see the Great Wall goes all around there goes all the way around round round and there's some more of the wall all the way around there so this goes from Pretty much your Uyghur province up into the north of uh, Korea, Manchuria. So this is a 96 series, as you can see. Then we have the 2 yuan. So this is Uyghur and a Yi woman. So she's the Uyghur with her costume. And a Yi. And on the back, we have the... Uh, Southern Heaven Rock. So you can find information on. So that's near Hainan Island. So the major island down south of China. And uh, that's quite nice. So those banknotes you're probably paying, I don't know, three or four dollars for a good condition banknote. Then we have the five year one. So this one has a Tibetan and a Hoi. So this Tibetan guy, as you can see, he's got thick clothing because Tibetans in the Himalayas, quite cold. Hoi, so they are a East Asian ethnic group, and they, but they practice Islam. And the Hoi's people, they speak different languages, uh, but I'd say the language that's pretty much uh, exemplifies them is a uh, Dungan language. So that is, and also the Tibetans have their own language related to Chinese, but quite diverged. And as you can see, look at the bird in the background. That's quite nice. This is this has a theme of imperial uh, China. And on the two you one, you can see the birds there as well. So that's very interesting that I've just realised. And on the ten yuan. So this banknote has a Han and Mongol. So it's a Mongol with a Han. And on the reverse we have Mount Everest, which are borders Nepal and uh, China. So it's pretty much split in half. You need a chainsaw for that. Maybe a uh, as a hacksaw. On the 5 u one we have the U Gorge on the Yangtze, Yangtze River. So it looks, this looks like a limestone cast system. Just the way the erosional structures have uh, developed. And uh, yeah, so you can look that up. When there's a lot of precipitation, that's what happens to limestone. So this one, you'd probably be paying five to ten dollars for a you one banknote same with this one you're probably paying five dollars for uh, 
I see that the price for these in uncirculated have actually gone up quite a lot. So that is because pretty much the Chinese banknote market is quite large. The Chinese banknotes over the last 20 years have increased substantially. And I reckon that it's probably quite stable now. And the prices have probably reached their peak for the time being. Uh, until you know the wages of China have increased a bit more. Anyway, I don't have the five and uh, fifty and a hundred one. Hopefully, I'll get those later on. But they have different themes than the people they portray. Anyway, thank you very much for watching my video. Hope this helps you with Chinese currency and have an awesome coin and banknote collecting time.